right, we're back. We're doing uh, EO in a car. And I got Linda Marshall with me, so thanks for doing this. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for being on the show. I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, so EO in a car is uh, just giving people an opportunity to understand um, people that are in entrepreneurs organizations, specifically in southwestern Ontario, and uh, trying to understand a bit more about why people have joined and what they're what they're doing with their membership. So before we get into it, um, like we always do with any of the interviews I have the privilege of doing in my car, um, can you give us a little background in terms of what you've been up to and what kind of entrepreneurial experience you've had and what you're doing these days? Okay, well, I worked at Mohawk College in Hamilton for 32 years. I had 18 careers. Uh, I was very, very fortunate. Red so I grew, grew up there. And uh, about three years ago, I decided that I would like to retire and try something different. And so I uh, decided to uh, write a book and I opened my business called Marshall Connects. And uh, I do a lot of work on emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Love what I do, and I guess I'm an entrepreneur. Cool. And family business? Yes, yes. I grew up in a family business uh, my entire life. Uh, my dad uh, ran a business, and then I married uh, my husband Rick, who uh, is my brother's business partner, and also uh, we have a family business. So I've uh, been always involved in business. And you have ownership in which kind of kind of business? Uh, in the truck and trailer repair. Right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So, emotional intelligence is a pretty big topic. It is. Uh, and it's, you know, um, in my experience anyway, with regard to leadership and like CEOs and C-level leadership, uh, really important in a lot of the publications I'm reading these days. So, uh, what was it that got you uh, intrigued by the topic? Well, I think I always was intrigued with emotional intelligence. When I started to do training with companies on employee engagement and uh, you know, managing diff difficult employees, I always went back to emotional intelligence training because what happens in life is we are driven by our emotions. We have more than 50,000 thoughts and feelings that come into our mind per day. And we get to select which ones to follow and manage. And so emotions drive what we do and they're very important. So the goal is to always manage your emotions and not have them manage you. And yet, it happens often with all of us that something will trigger us, we call that emotional hijacking, it takes us over, we can have up to four hours afterwards recovering, we call it emotional hijacking hangover. And a lot of the people that I deal with have these challenges. So I work with them to help them learn more about it and overcome it. And so what got you, like, what was the catalyst for you to get into it deep? It's always been of interest, but what was it that made you say, I'm going for it? Well, it's all because of the research, neuroplasticity, and, and what, which really dictates the fact that we can relearn. When I was growing up, I remember the saying, I'm not that old, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but that's not true. You can teach anyone something new. A couple things have to happen. They have to intrinsically want to learn. A will to learn. Yeah. They have to. Otherwise, you, a lot of people say, I want to do that, but they don't really want to do it. <laughs> and, and second, That's, then they have to practice. Right. Right. We have to practice and we can retrain the, our brain, the neurons in our brain, the pathways to do things differently. Some of us do uh, more quickly than others, mm -hmm. um, but it's all possible unless you have a, a significant brain injury, then of course that doesn't work. But So people knowing that get really excited. I get really excited. And I don't function the same way I did two or three years ago now that I've immersed myself in this. I really work hard on walking the talk. And I constantly say, um, you know, people with strong emotional intelligence are not perfectionists. And I spend most of my life trying to be a perfectionist. So now I'm trying not to be. So believe it or not, getting it done trumps perfection. Oh, you can, you re that. can you repeat that <laughs> one, please? <laughs> getting it done trumps perfection. Oh, that is agree? too good. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, I thought you would. Oh, man. Um, I've done so many videos where uh, I talk about an idea where, you know, there's a million people that have a great idea and there's very few people getting them done. True. And in our organization, um, a lot of things we need to deal with with new team members is them, you know, really being their own worst critic and not wanting to get something out the door because it's not perfect. And it's, I know it can be difficult, but you know, even something perfect today looked back on two months from now isn't going to be perfect. So if we always try to make it the best it can possibly be, it'll never get done. 
by definition. So I just That's think true. what you just said is brilliant. I wish everybody could Follow take that. note. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So I would I want I want to get back to the topic of emotional intelligence in a second, but maybe you can just take a minute and tell us why you decided to join the entrepreneurs organization in Southwestern Ontario. Well, I had a, a good experience actually. I spoke to one of the groups and I got a really good vibe from them. Um, I found that they're very unique. Uh, they all have something different to share. And I was looking to belong and connect to something. I worked at Mohawk, as I said, for 32 years. I went to work with teams of people and it took me a while to get to know myself on my own. And when I was ready, I thought I need to be with some like-minded people. Right. People I can share with and learn from. Very cool. And that's why I decided to join. That's why I decided to join, yeah. So, uh, you know, you've been a member for, what, just over, or just under a year? Yes, yes, under a year. Um, what have been some of the highlights so far in your experience? Well, the, the training forum that I went to, where actually I first time I met you, right, yeah, yeah. Was, a, was a really brilliant opportunity. Uh, I really enjoyed the people, uh, uh, different people from all over the um, southwestern region and our trainer was from the states i believe she was in chicago and yeah that's she, right yeah she, so i found that very interesting and uh so i left with a lot of information uh more confidence and uh really excited to learn more and be more with, with the EO. awesome yeah the forum training was yeah. really really cool experience good. and um yeah, she crushed it she did such a good job and has there been any other kind of like highlights for you since Yes, uh, we've I'd had different opportunities where we've had speakers come from different uh, EO uh, forums and we just recently had a retreat and I found that very rewarding. Got to connect with our forum, uh, get to, to know the uh, the team at a different level and uh, we got to do some sharing and uh, got some great takeaways. Cool. Um, you, you, I think you mentioned it before, the topic that the, the speaker was referencing. What was it again? Is some a window? Oh, the Jahari window. Yes, yes. I did that several times now before yeah. I came to form and since being informed. Can you give us a quick summary of what that is? Well, really, it's... it's and can you name it again? The Jahari window. Jahari window. Yes, yeah. yes. And you remember now? No, I haven't really been exposed to it. I've only been I've only caught reference of it. I've only okay. been around less than a year too. So when you start to really share at a deeper level, and so you have to really feel secure in the group, and you... Um, and actually I took this with my uh, certification for emotional intelligence as well, where you, um, when you share with people more information, it's like peeling an onion. You just let a little more yourself up. You become vulnerable. And when we become vulnerable in a trusted environment, we can really learn and get support from others. Cool. And so everyone had that opportunity. And, and so that's twice in, in EO that I've had it, two different opportunities and uh, found that uh, very helpful. And the, it's, so the Jahari window is the idea of opening up. Yes, different ways of uh, we can add a little bit more and share a little bit more information. So people might have known you for two or three years and you'll say something, uh, if you really knew me, and you'll share something with them that they wouldn't have known and get to understand you a little bit differently. And you come from a different perspective then. Cool. That's awesome. So then jumping back to your area of specialty and in emotional intelligence, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there are a number of different types of situations and issues people have with regard to emotional intelligence, and there's probably a whole bunch of common kind of hiccups like emotional hijacking and the emotional hijack hangover, um, but is there one thing that kind of bubbles up to the top in a lot of situations when you're meeting a group or meeting people and, and talking about this that they can tackle kind of out of the gate? Well, I think that people are fascinated when they actually start to think about emotions because emotional intelligence is when you can recognize, understand, and manage your emotions and those of others, which is a pretty tall order. Sure. So most of us go through the day, we don't even recognize our emotions. Like we get up in the morning, how do we feel? What do we think about? Uh, and then why? Why do we feel that way? Some things we can change or we can't change. Um, we start to learn strategies to get to know ourselves better. And the key to uh, having strong emotional intelligence is having a deep awareness of oneself. Right. And once you do, you can manage yourself better. It affects you in social settings and certainly enhances your relationships. So when people start to pick up some of these tips, it sort of changes the way they look at things. So what would be a tip? Um, let me see. Uh, one, one might be uh, for self-awareness is the way you breathe. 
Okay. Sometimes we're in situations where someone asks us a question, uh, we might be anxious or whatever. Sometimes we feel forced to talk. It, it takes six seconds to redirect your brain. So if you're feeling anxious or upset or nervous, you can take a deep breath, refocus uh, within six seconds and regain your composure. So it's just little things. And six seconds, breathe. I mean, taking silence for six seconds could seem like a long time, but really isn't. Well, you can cough, take a sip of water. Sure, that's what I mean though, right? That's, that's, those are strategies. That's we really say all cool. The time. That's awesome. Yeah, never, never put yourself in a position that you have to speak when you're not ready. And I, you know, it's really interesting you say that too, because even uh, there's all sorts of situations where um, in our organization we've seen that true. And one of them, for example, is when we call a client um, and they, they're not able to pick up the phone and we leave a message and then we're in the middle of something and they call back, but we're not ready you know, psychologically, emotionally, whatever, to have the conversation might not always be good. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's yes. more, you know, um, so it could be bad news. It could be just work related, whatever, but we're not necessarily prepped for everything that we need from them. And our team instinctually, you know, so far that we've trained have always been like, you know, feeling like they have pressured to talk and, and get into yes. it. And so we try to recommend, um, just put them on hold for a minute. Yes. Compose yourself, gather yourself, get the information you need, tell them you're just gonna be one second, and then get back on the phone and go. Yes, that's Very perfect. similar, right? Perfect. The bottom line is, it's always the way you make people feel. So if you say, well, can you hold on for one moment, please, and you let them respond without clicking, and right. you know, like, because sometimes people say, well, hold, and they click. Do you mind if I hold, please? Yeah. And then you click. Okay. <laughs> so you're, you're left hanging, but it's always that, you know, I, I want to give you the attention, I just did, I need to finish this one detail, and I'll be right with you, or I'm just going to pull up your file, can you hold for a moment, whatever. Yeah. It's always the way you make people feel, so it's that warmth, that eye contact, because I've gone into situations where I don't even know the person, but I've been in a room with them before, had a real good vibe from them, they've been very respectful, and I I'm gravitated towards that person. We're gravitated toward people who have strong emotional intelligence. Cool. That's why we want to strengthen those skills. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this, Linda. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. See you guys. Hey, guys. If you want to check out some more information uh, or interviews, you can go right here. Or if you want to check out some I'm in a Cars with Rob Murray, you can go right here. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Leave your comments below and share away. Thanks, guys.